Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Quest 2. So just before we continue with the game, I wanted to go ahead and show the Tandy introduction to this game because I realize a lot of people play this game on a regular IBM PC, which has a monotone audio capability. There was the possibility to possibility to play digitized audio on the PC internal speaker, but most games didn't do it. It was complicated to do. It was uh, it was pretty code intensive, so most people didn't bother. Most games didn't bother to do it. But um, the Tandy uh, had pretty nice three voice audio. It could play three different notes at once, which gave possibility for harmonies and polyphony and things like that, which you just couldn't do with a regular PC speaker, at least not easily. So um, I'm running DOSBox here. I have it configured to emulate a Tandy machine rather than just a regular PC. Let's go ahead and run Space Quest 2 and let's experience the intro. Uh, we saw last time the intro, you know, the Apple IIGS version of the intro, but here's the Tandified version of it. So there you go. So, I mean, it's the same music. Uh, it's obviously not quite as cool, in my opinion, as the rendition from the Apple IIGS, but Again, the Apple IIGS versions of these games tended to be the, the best versions in terms of audio. But that's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty decent, um, pretty decent three-voice harmony going on there. So yeah, the Tandy was not, uh, it was kind of an underdog. I don't feel like the Tandy's ever sold very well. Um, I'm not sure actually, did they sell well? I mean, I know they were significant fours back in the day, but I don't think they sold as well as regular PCs um, eventually did. But um, yeah, the Tandy had, uh, I think, a significantly more pleasant sound to its internal speaker than the PC. But, you know, I mean, obviously it's a matter of opinion, uh, and I don't mean to denigrate the PC. I mean, I grew up with a PC, as many of you did, but still, I have to admit the PC's speaker was not the best. It didn't have the best audio capabilities, obviously. Anyway, they even have a sweeping sound in this game. It's just like, uh, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a tinny sweeping sound, but, uh, it works. Okay, anyway, so that was the Tandy intro. All right, let's let's uh, let's get back to the game. Let's get back to the uh, to our regularly scheduled Space Quest game. I'm just gonna... Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. I'm just gonna switch back to the... Um, to my Apple II GS emulate for. That would be... This window here, methinks. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, and one other thing I wanted to show, I forgot this last time. Uh, so we're here back in the, um, in this room here where you change clothes. Um, what happens if you walk into this control room still wearing your EVA suit? Um, I believe EVA, I, I said last time it stands for extravehicular. I believe it stands specifically for extravehicular activity. So it's our suit for extravehicular activity. What happens if we come in here wearing that? You've got a lot of nerve coming in here with your EVA suit on, Roger Wilco, screams your boss. That's the last straw. Turn in your mop. You're fired. Well, Roger Wilco, you certainly didn't get off to a very good start. Better luck next shift. Hey, come on, I made it to the third screen without dying. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good run for a Sierra Adventure. Keep up the good work, Roger Wilco. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
that music makes it so much better. I feel like this ending is kind of sad because, you know, he didn't die. I mean, we didn't die. We just, we just got fired and then there's just this infinite expanse of space before us. It's like, what happened? Did we get jettisoned into space or are we just kind of looking out at the stars in a, a lonesome kind of way, wondering how we're going to get our lives back together now that we've lost our jobs? Anyway, um, okay, let's get back on track. So we were here. Now, um, a logical thing to do, I guess, is to, since you seem to be in a rather exotic forest, the growth here is unlike anything you are used to. On the ground lies the wreckage of the hovercraft you crashed in. Nearby are the bodies of your former captors. So I guess a logical thing to do is to examine this hovercraft, see if there's anything here. The hovercraft has been reduced to a mount of twisted wreckage. Everything that was straight is bent. Everything that was bent is benter. That's one of my... That's one of my favorite sentences from any adventure game. Everything that was bent is benter. Which is obviously not a word, but they made it a word. That's that's pretty awesome. There appear to be no salvageable parts. Okay. So no sal salvageable parts from the, from the hovercraft. Um, since we learned our lesson from the first Space Quest game, let's do what comes naturally to a, a Space Quest protagonist and search the bodies. You search the grotesque body and find nothing. What about this other body here? You search the grotesque body and find a small, thin magnetic card. It looks like a key card. You seem to recall seeing one somewhere in the past. Hmm. Almost like there might have been a previous game in which we also got a body from searching a key card. Can't imagine. That must have been just a fever dream. Can we get the key card? Okay. Yes, we can. It looks like your average key card. Okay. Fair enough. I can't say that I've seen too many key cards in my life, so uh, I'll take your word for it. I guess that's probably what a what an average key card looks like. Um, so you can pretty clearly hear a beeping sound. In fact, I think if you type "listen," yeah, the game will actually point it out as if you. I mean, unless unless you have audio problems, you probably can hear it yourself. But yeah, you hear a high pitched beep. It seems to be emanating from the wrecked hovercraft. Now, that is a clue. It is a significant clue. And um, uh, how do we, whoops. There we go. You don't say look hovercraft, you do search hovercraft. Maybe, I wonder if examine would work. Examine hovercraft. No, you have to say search hovercraft. Maybe there are other verbs that will work as well, but okay. So if you specifically say search, you do notice a button with a flashing light next to it. It seems to be emitting a high-pitched beep. What happens if you push the button? You press the button, the light goes dark, and you no longer notice the high-pitched beep. Which is also something that you have to do in Space Quest V, by the way, for the exact same reason. So. This is a point where you could say the game's a little bit nasty because if you don't do that, if you don't push that button, um, you have that typical sort of dead man walking situation where you will die later and uh, you can't finish the game if you don't do this here. So this is one of those points where people could justifiably say, hey, the game is being kind of mean. The game doesn't really tell you that you have to do that. I'm kind of a, of a divided mind regarding that because the beeping is pretty clear. The beeping is pretty audible. I mean, again, unless you're either hard of hearing or, you know, your audio is not working for some reason, you'll probably hear the beeping. I mean, it's there for a reason. It's there to be a clue that you need to do this. Um, if you don't do this, then yeah, you can't finish the game. And some people will say, well, that's that's mean that the game forces you into an unwinnable situation because, uh, I mean, so we can't go left from here. I can kind of understand it. I realize that it is a little, <clears throat> it is a little bit mean, but I feel like it's not that mean because um, it's not that difficult to think, hmm, maybe that beeping means something. All right, so I'll go ahead and save here. Uh, stopped beeping. And I don't think, I can't go directly up from here, but I can go around this, uh, around this bush. Let's beat around the bush. All right, so let's see, what do we have here? You're in a strange looking stand of woods. All right, so I think we can go 
Oh, suddenly from somewhere to the east, you hear a twang followed by a high-pitched shriek. All right, let's check out this twang. In the east, you say. Okay. I wonder if we found the source of our twang here. You're in another area of the fourth. The seems to be getting heavier here. Looks like there is a... Uh, is that a human? Looks like kind of a, like a humanoid. The little creature caught in the snare has thick-looking pinkish skin. He looks to be less than a meter tall. That's uh, a meter is a little more than three feet. He doesn't seem too thrilled with this predicament. I can imagine he wouldn't be. Um, can we talk to this fellow? He doesn't respond. Let's hug him. Maybe he needs a hug. Oh, the game doesn't understand hug. Okay. Well, I guess let's do the nice thing and set him free. Is he going to kill us? Before disappearing through a tiny hole in the brush, the little creature gives you a long glance. I like that little music. I like the way there's just, there's just like the very a very subtle little sort of kind of groove happening there. Like it's not a very strong, uh, not a very intrusive piece of music at all, but just kind of like a, a subtle little sort of doom, 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 doom. All right. Well, that was our good deed for the day. That will come back to help us later. And can we get the rope that he was hanging from? We got the weight of the little creature on the rope. It is not within your reach. Okay. Yeah, we don't need that rope anyway. We don't actually need to take it. We will not need it in uh, in this game. So what's to the right of here? Oh, nothing. Okay, we can't go right from this room. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this was just to free the, uh, the little pink guy. Fair enough. I guess I can... Uh, I can live with having detoured into this room just to save the pink guy. Oops, wrong button. I meant to press Shift-5 to save. Freed guy. All right, let's continue on. So I don't think there's much to do on this screen. Um, there are four exits, well, actually five exits from this room, I guess. You can go down here in the lower right where we just were. You can go back down to where the hovercraft was that we crashed here in. You can go behind here to the right, and this path here goes to another room. You can similarly go from here, you can go to the left here. This also goes somewhere else. And then just going directly left from here goes you to, to goes it goes you. Yes, it takes, it takes you to a fifth place. So let's see, can we do, oh, you hear something. It sounds not like the hovercraft you rode in. Hmm. Maybe somebody's coming to save us. We take a look at these trees. The trees around the perimeter of the area have a, sh a shiny, slick look. The two in the middle have a duller kind of sheen. Hmm, okay. Oh. Hmm. Drats. Vohal's troops have tracked you down and passed sentence for your escape. Tough luck, eh? Way to go, Wingnut. Once again, you've demonstrated your inability to sustain life. You quickly glance around the room to see if anyone saw you blow it. How can you glance around the room if you're dead? Okay, so a couple of things. Um, I think you can just avoid that hovercraft just by being quick. Instead of hanging around and just blabbing for too long, I think you can just uh, avoid it altogether. But you can get extra points by hiding from it. And just as I think we saw a couple of times on the Arcada in Space Quest 1, you can just hide behind the... Oh, I guess I can't... Okay. Hmm. Can't hide behind that tree. Can I... Um, I guess I can... Okay, let's try this then. I think this will work. Let's walk behind this tree here and just wait here. You hear something... Sound, okay.
Yeah, that sound effect, once again, that sound effect is not how these hovercraft are supposed to sound. I don't know why it sounds like that. Phew, that was a tense moment. Vohol's thug failed to spot you and is off to search elsewhere. Now, I have to admit, I find the, the solution a bit stupid because, okay, we can't see Roger because we're looking at him from this perspective, but those hovercraft flew in from the side. So if you're flying in from the side, you would see Roger standing beside the tree. Yeah, from here you can't see it. Yeah, you, you couldn't see him, but... Uh, I find that just a little bit silly. I feel like this is just, just a bit dumb. I mean, maybe I'm overthinking it, but it uh, seems like a bit of a dumb solution to me. But okay, it worked. I'll take it. I'm not going to complain that I survived. Let's save again. Uh, hid. I hid. Can we climb these trees? You're not in a good place to do that. Okay, I guess this tree is too slick and slimy for that. Let's start climbing this big tree. I like, I like to grab a big thick wood. Let's climb onto this big thick wood here. This is uncool. It looks like you've adhered yourself to this tree like a fly to fly paper. And speaking of insects, here comes the swarm now. You'll be proud to know that you've filled today's nutritional requirements for many of the local carnivorous insects. Adventuring is not always pretty. <laughs> yeah, so actually you can't do anything with these trees. That's just... Uh, I feel like they just put in that death to make sure you can die in every screen because it really does seem like in pretty much every single screen of this game there's one way to die. Uh, so I feel like they just did that just to be consistent with that. Uh, an exception is this screen here. I don't think there's a way to die here. Um, there's another clearing in the otherwise heavily wooded area of the forest. There's a plateau near the back. Yeah, so there's a plateau there with this thing on it, but we'll need to take the other exit to get there. We'll do that later. Um, what are these things on the ground? The ground looks like everywhere else with the exception of some growths which look like spores or pods. So that's these things and these things. Let's take a look at the uh, spores. Spores are light blue and bulb shaped. They seem to be loosely attached to the ground. Okay. All right. Seems reasonable enough. Can we go to the left from here? Nope, foliage is too dense. All right, let's check out these spores then. You seem to have kicked one of these strange little spores. Oh dear. You, your kick caused some sp your kick caused some spores to open and spray a fine powder into the air. Um, also, the way that Roger just kind of collapsed on those spores face first, I think pretty much ensures that whatever powder they have left in them will be dispersed directly into his face and into his uh, respiratory system. As a result, you are paralyzed from head to toe, unable to move a single muscle. Fortunately, the paralysis wears off and he seems to be back to normal. So yeah, um, I don't know why they made those spores survivable. I'm, I'm going to restore my game anyway, even though it doesn't really matter because I don't think there's any negative penalty from, from hitting the spores. Um, yeah, I mean, this could have been a, a way to die in this screen, but they didn't turn it into that. They actually made it survivable. I don't know why. And actually, yeah, you do need to get a spore. So let's take a spore. You take this into one of the spores, being careful not to mistakenly break it open. This is one of the unopened spores. Okay, cool. So yeah, we will need the spore later. Um, and yeah, like I said, don't know why they uh, why they made it non-lethal, because that would have been fairly consistent, making again one way to die in every room. Oh hey, look who it is! It's that uh, that guy whom we set free. He will be helpful in a couple of places. You can see a little guy across the clear clearing picking some sort of berries from a bush. Okay, and that's a clue. That is a clue to us. 
Oh, he runs off, but okay, that's okay. We didn't need him here anyway, other than just to observe him picking the berries. So what do we have here? You're another clearing in the forest. This one seems to be occupied by a type of growth you're not familiar with. Hmm. What do you want to guess that this growth might not be uh, particularly conducive to our continued life? Let's check this theory out. Just from the way things are going, I'm going to guess that I was correct. That's also a pretty, pretty grisly scream. Good. You've succeeded in establishing contact with one of this planet's life forms. It looks like you'll get to examine it up close and personal. The giant root-looking thing is giving you a guided tour of its digestive system. This... it should not have that apostrophe there because it's a possessive. What you experience ne next is too horrible to describe. Let's just say you die as a result. You are dead. Trust me. Yeah, I kind of figured that. It may please you to know that during the night you didn't digest well. For a while, gastric distress made it extremely unpopular with the other root monsters. Oh, well, that makes it all better, doesn't it, now? So, this is a typical example of... Um, how Sierra tended to abuse their adventure. Oh, come on. There's there's no there's no growth there. I didn't I didn't step on it. That's just ridiculous. I did not step on a growth there. That's a that's a bug. I actually now that I think of it, I remember that's that's like a, a glitch in the game that it that root there will grab you beyond where it's actually drawn. Like they didn't the hitbox on that route is not uh, is not accurate. Let's go ahead and obviously do a little bit of saving along the way. Don't want to. I mean, you can do this without saving. I've done it. You can just if you get if you. Okay, that one too. I didn't actually touch the route. It just once you figure out how to do it, you can do this without saving. I've done it a couple of times, but it's it's been a long time since I did it, and it's it's better just to save because why bother? It's, we're not trying to show off here. We're just trying to make it through the game. If I say look at the growth, does it describe it in any way? It seems to be some kind of overdeveloped root. There is a pulsating growth near the middle, which is connected to several meters of root-like appendages. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a a root monster. And then at the end here, Roger ducks underneath that root to uh, not brush up against it. All right, so let's see here. Let's look at this bush. All the bushes look the same except for the one at the far end of the clearing, which has some, which has small berries growing on it. You can check out the berries. The berries hang on this bush look, look quite juicy and smell very pungent. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's do what that little pink guy did and get some berries. You snag some of the odoriferous red berries. Cool. Let's check them out. Strange Red Berries pack a very pungent aroma. Okay, you've mentioned that several times, game. I think I get the point. All right, now it's just time to go back. I mean, this is the kind of thing that Sierra, Sierra like, like to have puzzles like this. I mean, puzzles. It's not a puzzle. It's just a, an exercise in dexterity. It's not even that super difficult. It just, this is the kind of thing they like to do with this, with the, uh, with the 3D adventure engine. Just have these little puzzles where you kind of had to walk carefully across... Uh, or around obstructions, kind of like a little, kind of like that skill game at, at carnivals. You know how there's that, uh, what do you call that skill game where you have to move like some metal wand along a wire without touching it? I forget the name of that, but you'll, I mean, you folks know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Somebody will, oh, come on, I did not touch that. That's nonsense, that's just nonsense now. That is just nonsense. There's bullshit! I want some chocolate milk! Alright. I want my shirts laundered! Okay. We made it. We survived the growth. We survived the root monster. That was a nice little... I mean, nice. It's nice if you do it once. It gets tedious if you have to do it a lot, but, you know, they... It... It lasts just long enough that it doesn't get tedious and boring. 
Although I know some people probably complained about it and said, oh, this this root monster is so stupid. Why did they put this in the game? It spoils the game. I don't think it spoils the game. It's just, it's a little unnecessary, but it's not that bad. Okay, so we're doing pretty well. So we've already seen everything over here and we saw that thing on the plateau to the left. So let's go ahead and just make a quick, quick visit up to that thing that was up there. Let's see what it was or what it is what it presumably still is. I'm hoping it doesn't disappear in the time that it's been off screen to the left. All right, so what do we have here? Look at, uh, I guess, the machine. Oh, it's a mailbox. It looks typical for a mailbox. There is a slot, a tray, and a sign. Let's read the sign. The sign says, Radical Express, when it totally, no doubt for sure, has to be there a while previously. Okay, so this is such a fast delivery service, it delivers in the past. I guess they use time machines to go back in the past to deliver before you shipped your package. That's pretty cool. All right, so what does it have? It has a slot and a tray. I guess this is a good place to mail that order form that we have because we have an order form for a, uh, a free Labian Beast, a, a Labian Terror Beast mating whistle. So this game actually came with a comic book. This is kind of a reference to the comic book things that you used to be able to buy from, you know, old fashioned comic books in like the 1940s, 50s, I guess. So old comic books around from those times often had little mail-in forms where kids could order stuff through the mail. And um, the manual for this game actually emulates one of those comic books. And it, it has like a little form that, you know, supposedly, I think it, is that right? I think it had like a form in that that you, in it that you could supposedly send in. And it was fake. I mean, it's all fake. There's no real uh, mating whistle to be had. But it kind of, you know, in the game there is. So this is ready to be mailed. So let's go ahead and mail the form. You drop the order form into the box. The mailbox hums and buzzes for a while. That sounded almost like the intro to Die, Robo Die Roboter von Kraftwerk. Then an object of some sort drops into the tray at the base of the box. The machine goes silent. Okay, let's look at the tray. What did we get? The tray is actually a small indentation in the lower part of the machine. It's currently bearing what it looks to be a whistle. Hey, cool. Let's get the whistle. Okay. We got a whistle. It is usual looking. Let's, uh, let's blow that whistle. Oh, you don't need to do that now. Okay. Well, nice of the game to tell us that we don't need to blow the whistle now, because otherwise I would have done so unnecessarily. That would have been terrible. That would have been a horrible mistake. Can we blow it here? There you go. That's the sound of the whistle. Doesn't sound like much, does it? But that will be the sound that the whistle makes in the game. Let's go ahead and save, just because we're doing so well. Got whistle. And yeah, the whistle does play a role, or this kind of action of ordering the whistle does play a role in further Space Quest games and future Space Quest games, as many of you know, but we won't talk about that now. Oh, hey, look who it is. It's this guy again. What's he doing now? You see a small fleshy being. He seems to be in a hurry to leave. Okay, I, I was too slow, but if you look at him before he runs, before he starts running away, it says he's rubbing something on himself, and that is a pretty strong clue, of course, because, well, let's just go ahead and ignore the clue, shall we? Let's just go ahead and proceed. Yuck. Well, whatever he was doing, it doesn't seem to be too necessary. We seem to be making pretty good progress through the... Oh. What is that? We're standing at the edge of an eerie swamp. You can hear the croaks and moans of swamp life, none of which you are eager to encounter. Hmm. Oh, it's playing the Jaws music. That's nice. I'm sure nothing can go wrong here. Whoa. You feel something slimy clamp down on your leg and pull you beneath the surface. You struggle in vain to free yourself. Unfortunately, your desire to breathe results in the intake of a large quantity of swamp water. If the lack of oxygen hadn't killed you, the taste of the putrid water would have. 
You're dead. Better luck next time, Roger Wilco. Thanks for making that clear. You're dead. You dead. I hope this doesn't sound racist, but I remember that it reminds me a little bit of a. Um, there's a video of some um, African American. Uh, I think he's a comedian. Actually, I forget his name, but he's he's on some uh, some talks. We're talking about an encounter he had in England, and uh, he was in England, and somebody asked him what he thought of some uh, famous English uh, writer or poet, and his response was, "Well, um, he did." And the person he was speaking to said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I must be very British and correct your English. I believe the correct term is, he died. And so the uh, American responded, first he died, now he dead. On that note, this has been Space Quest 2. We will continue next time and figure out how to get through this swamp. But since I've already been playing for half an hour, it's a good time to stop here. So thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you all next time. Take care. Thanks for watching and ta-ta for now. You dead.